One of the immutable and undeniable uh, tenets of immunology is natural immunity. But for two years, it was denied. It wasn't even just denied, it was censored. Mr. Sauer, I noticed in the court ruling, um, in the case that you worked on, uh, that they said that, the court said that Facebook reported to the White House that it labeled and demoted posts suggesting natural immunity to a COVID-19 infection is superior to vaccine immunity. Is that true? Was that kind of censorship going on? Yes, that kind of censorship was going on, and there were direct communications between the platforms and federal officials about natural immunity specifically that I think you've correctly quoted. And um, thanks to the Twitter files, we found out that the former FDA director who was on the board of Pfizer, Ms. Dr. Scott Gottlieb, wrote on August 27, 2021, to Twitter executive Todd O'Boyle, who, by the way, was kind of one of the go-to people for the White House also to coordinate with when they wanted something suppressed, uh, requested Twitter take action against a post about natural immunity. Uh, you know, what's amazing to me is Scott Gottlieb, who works for Pfizer, who's a former FDA director, went to Twitter the day I got censored on natural immunity, my post, a congressional post. Now, the other side said, well, your, your tweet's still up, your post is still up, what do you mean you're getting censored? What they did is they labeled it and they denied anybody's ability to, to actually comment on it, and they de-boosted it. Yep. So I simply said natural immunity is better than vaccine immunity. We had studies showing that. They took it, they, they censored it. So the next day I tried it again with a reference to Bloomberg, Bloomberg hardly a right-wing um, outlet at, or, or conspiracy generator, and they censored that one as well. This, this is astounding to me. Mr. Kennedy, can you talk about the uh, censorship, the effort of the White House and pharma to suppress the acknowledgement of natural immunity and, and why they might have been doing that? Well, again, it, it was an effort uh, to suppress information, not uh, the, in fact, if you read the Twitter files and the email correspondence at, uh, between Facebook and the White House, there was an acknowledgement that they were being asked and they were complying with censoring information that everybody knew to be true or highly likely to be true. Oh, the purpose, and in fact, the term misinformation did not denote uh, falsehood or, or veracity. Rather, it was a euphemism mm -hmm. for any information that departed from government orthodoxies. And it is very dangerous. And, you know, uh, uh, the congressman a minute ago said a million people have died because of mis misinformation about vaccines in this country. But, in fact, our country had the worst, had one of the highest vaccination rates in the world, and the worst health outcomes. We have 4.2% of the global population. We had 16% of the COVID deaths. Blacks in Haiti with a 1% vaccination rate were dying at a rate of 15 per million population. And same in Nigeria, had a 1.3 vaccination rate. They were dying at one in 14 per million population, 14 per million population. In our country, blacks were dying at 3,000 per million population, 200 times the death rates in other countries. And this holds throughout the world. We needed information. We should have all been sharing information openly and, and talking to the 15 million doctors through the internet who were treating patients on the front line all over the world and channeling the best therapies, the most successful treatments so that we can all figure it out. We, this is not a time in a pandemic to, uh, to you know, I'll just say this one thing. Trusting the experts is not a function of science. It's not a function of democracy. It's a function of religion and totalitarianism, and it does not make for a healthier population. Mm. Let, let me ask you this. You, you referenced your, your father and your uncle and the, the, the party that they were in. What has happened to your party with respect to the First Amendment? Would they recognize the position now? I, you know, I think... Listen, I'm a Democrat, and I, you know, and I believe in all the. If you went through a checklist of all of the things that my father believed in, that he fought for, that my uncle believed in and fought for, I, I would check every box. 
I feel my party is departing, has departed from some of those core values. And one of the reasons that I want to run for president is to reclaim my party for those. But it's got to, you know, listen, this is not a partisan issue. The First Amendment, it just seems crazy to me that anybody thinks that it's okay to censor. And there's a lot of information that I don't like. There's hateful information, but as the chairman was saying, in 1977, the ACLU went out and, and supported Nazis who were walking through a Jewish neighborhood in Skokie, Illinois. And they said, that's important. We're, we hate what they're saying. We're repulsed by it. But we cannot survive as a democracy if we, if we, if we are not ready to die for the right for even people who are, who are appalling to speak. The, the democracy won't work, unfortunately. There's no other way to control it but through the First Amendment and free speech. Amen, and thank you for those comments. Time, time the gentleman has expired. I, I, 